Permaculture is a lens, it's a way of seeing the world. Part of what makes it distinct as a modality is that it looks through the lens of geology and geography. It is important to also remind ourselves that we're standing in an ecology that was human created in many senses through mismanagement. When you understand that people would clear cut slopes like this to graze cattle, you begin to grasp why I'm sure that we can do a better job than that when it comes to being good stewards and good farmers and getting good yield and getting good products. All are completely achievable. And permaculture is practical. It's what I call optimistic nihilism. The planet is the way that it is from human agency, right? Remember this morning's narrative. The last 500 years has been about colonization, conquering, exploitation, and clear-cutting ecologies. What's important is that we include everybody in the conversation. I'm Jenny. I'm very interested in learning more. Hey everybody, Eric here. Very interested in the whole idea of permaculture and forming a community that integrates things from the old world and the new world. My name is Steve. I've been around a lot of forward-thinking um, community development organizations. The permaculture development is a, an essential component to that. I'm really excited to absorb as much as I can and over the next months and years implement. I'm Elisa. I love watching videos where they turn the deserts into gardens of Eden. I'm Jan. Seth here. Um, just happy to be out in the woods and uh, looking forward to learning something. Bill Henry. I want to introduce to you the trees that I stepped over a couple of years ago. <laughs> they don't seem like, to me, like they're over five years old, but they might be ten. Those are catalpa trees. And they're not, I don't think they're native, but they grow like crazy. Yeah, we were walking up there and uh, we just found some beautiful spots in the giant, biggest black birch tree I've ever seen in my life. And that's what we're excited to try to hand off to future generations and say, we want our children's children to grow up where there's old growth forests again. How are we going to see that happen? And we're saying one of the ways we're going to see it happen by really getting smart about farms that are using more trees and animals and people power and are less based on fossil fuels and tractors. So there's an interesting relationship between wild ecology and cultivated. Permaculture is about blurring the lines. Is it financially viable to do sustainable methods? A plant like Japanese knotweed is one of the best medicinal treatments for Lyme disease. Mudwort is a huge benefit for people who have trouble with sleeping at night. Now imagine we planted it out with cherry trees and plum trees and Carpathian walnut and pecan, right? If we just get a little more complex in our mosaic of, say, plant palette and farm uses, you suddenly get a lot more potential positive feedback. Like instead of deforesting steep slopes and grazing cattle there, in places like this, we reforest with all these added value nuts, berries, medicinal crops, the things you grow underneath the trees that are medicinal. They call them NTFPs, non-timber non forest, forest products. products. Yep. And what permaculture is, is it's this investigation into who we are as a species and how can we adapt to the landscapes where we are.